hopefully my audio is back. Nice, smooth start when you go to start live streaming and your microphone refuses to unmute. Hello, <laughs> welcome to my weekly No Dread live stream. Uh, an hour or so doing something interesting in the No Dread project, um, some development work in some corner. Um, you can probably see from the uh, caption, there we are, if I can point, something interesting. I'm not entirely sure what we're doing tonight, um, partly because, you know, we've shipped version 2.0 last week. My last few days, quite a few days, have been spent dealing with issues that have cropped up, um, mostly around the HTTP request node. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we had a you know, good six week long or so beta period. Um, and I, we kind of hoped that that would help catch lots of the edge cases. Clearly there were more edge cases to be found. So we've um, had to do a number of fixes for the request node over the last few days. And we're currently on 203. So we've done three fix releases. We've actually got 204 ready to ship. Um, and uh, yeah, ready to ship. I, I would have done earlier. I just ran out of time this afternoon to actually do get that shipped. I could ship it on the live stream. It's not that interesting to watch me do a release on a live stream, to be honest. So I suspect I'll do it after the live stream. So 204 will be coming later tonight. In parks, I am on holiday next week and I'm away without my laptop for a whole week. So I kind of want to get 2.0 settled down in terms of these these issues that are cropping up. So um, yeah, you know, it's aside from these last remaining issues which we've now fixed, it's gone hopefully quiet. I Hopefully a lot of the early adopters have now installed it. They've either stumbled over one of these edge cases or they've not and their flows are carrying on working, which is good news. So, yeah, we'll see. So, yeah, tonight, what we're going to do? Um, a couple of choices. One is carrying on what I was doing a couple weeks ago. Um, uh, I didn't live stream last week, did I? Or did I? I? I've lost track. No, I didn't live stream last Monday because it was my wife's birthday. And I, I had forgotten to cancel the stream. But thankfully, I remembered her birthday. So... Um, that took priority last week and I'm going to be on holiday, like I said, next week. So no live stream next week. In fact, August is going to be a bit on and off. Just it's school holiday time here in the UK and I'm in and out with the kids uh, a fair bit through the month. So let's make the most of the time we have together tonight. Um, just say, hi guys, Softy2K, Moshio, uh, Zomil. Great to see you guys. Thanks for saying hi. Um, let's see what we're going to get up to tonight. There we are. Um, now, is the stream chat going to start working? We had problems with the stream window on the in the embed, but meh. let's see. Hopefully one of you can say something in a minute and we'll see if it appears. Um, but that's goodness. So the last couple of weeks, we spent a bunch of time in the Flow Parser. So this is the new library we've created, used in the Lint tool um, to sort of give us the standard API for parsing Flow files. And we've spent the last couple of weeks, um, uh, spent the last couple of weeks sorting out um, some unit tests and better test coverage. Uh, Zoramil, yep. Yeah. So thanks for your message. You can use the Streamlabs widget. I know. I, I haven't got that set up. I've I've set up a an embed which I thought would work, but the fact you've posted a message and it's not showing up tells me it is not working. So I think if I switch to that and turn off that, cool. There you go. You can now see the chat, and I just have to remember that you can see that bit of my screen now. Um, flow parser. So we spent the last couple streams adding some more unit test coverage to it, and we got that into a pretty good place in terms of the test coverage. Um, to be honest, I think I'm not going to do that tonight. I think I'm going to switch gears and switch back to the Node-RED Lint tool, NR Lint. Um, 
we um, uh, we have a couple of issues open. Um, an issue with the no loops allowed lint rule hitting some false positives. Well, I've already got the fix for that. Um, in fact, here we go. Here's an issue raised by uh, Bonani Tech, Mauricio, uh, yourself. Um, so here is an issue that you can't revert the settings back to the default values like the UI claims you can. So yeah, that that's this seems like a decent issue to go um, have take a look at. So uh, Node-RED Lint, we're not going to include it by default in Node-RED. It's going to be a, it's always going to be an optional extra thing to install um, because there are people who embed Node-RED who won't want the Lint tool embedded. So both it and Node-RED debugger will always be optional extra modules for you to install rather than bundled in the core. Um, okay, so let's get ourselves set up to test with the flow debugger. Um, sorry, the lint tool. So this is how we go about running it. Um, this is my window for running Node-RED. Um, and I'm just going to run grunt dev in there, which runs the build and watches the source tree for any changes and automatically restarts Node-RED if needed. So that just ticks along in the background. Then let's get another window up where you can see what's going on. Um, so in here, we're going to go into the NR lint package. Now, uh, oh, and I'm in my fix loops branch. Let's go um, back into main. Nope, master. Okay. What's going on? Why is that hung? Hello? That has genuinely hung, hasn't it? Why would a get pull hang? Are we... Are we being blessed by a GitHub outage? No. Hmm. Well, that's not what I want to see at this time of night. Okay, let's hopefully, um, well, hopefully the stream is still working and this isn't my network having gone down. Uh, let me just pull up. Let me put up my channel just so I can keep an eye on what you guys are seeing as well as what I think you guys are seeing. Okay, looks to me like we're streaming. Fine. Um, let's close that window because I can hear myself echoing back on myself, which is not fun. Okay, um, give git pull one more go. Yeah, see, I, th I wonder if there's a bit of a GitHub outage. Not to worry, we can run without it. Um, let me remind myself. We are going into nrlint, and we have, um, we want to be running the build. Um, because we're going to be fixing something, uh, because of where in the code base we're touching code, um, I'm just going to quickly put this little hack in. So after we successfully run a build, we're just going to touch a file called restart.js in the Node-RED source tree. And the reason I do that hack is if I just npm run No, we want to do nodemon, there we are. No, sorry, head's not 
fully with it. We're running nodemon to watch the lint tool source tree. And whenever that runs, we'll rerun a build. And whenever the build succeeds, we'll touch a file in the node red source tree, which will cause nodemon up in my top window to restart node red and reload the linter plugin. So it's very Heath Robinson, but it works. Okay, so let's just go and have a look at what the bug is. So once you set a value in the lint tool for grid size, you cannot roll back to the default values. Okay, let's go have a look at that. Uh, let's fire up node red, just reload it to make sure we're clean. So here's the lint tool, go into settings and let's say align to grid, we set it to 80. And then pull back up. Okay, so that's, that says 80, which is good. Then if I click use defaults, it does go back to 20 there. I hit close, pull it back up and it has reverted itself, which is what it should do. So, okay, so let me reread. Set a value for grid size and max size, refresh the page, delete the value or press the use defaults, refresh the page. Ah, okay, so there's a bit of refresh. So reload and it has indeed reverted. Okay, subtle. So refreshing the page is important, curious. Okay, what we're going to do is, um, you know what, I'm going to use all these terminals I've made bigger. I'm actually going to get them out of the way because we don't really need to look at those. What is What I'm going to go look at is where it's storing your customized lint um, configuration. So in the .node red directory, there will be a file called uh, config.users.json. And in this file will be uh, the nrlint setting. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up a watch of cat. Oh, mm. Hold on. Um, so I can never remember JQ's. Yeah. So it's underscore NR lint is what we're looking for. Let me check this. So use JQ, which is a cool, very helpful tool for pulling apart JSON. And is the right syntax? Yes. So it's useful when you've got a JSON file, you can give it a little a path in the JSON and it will just spit out that bit of the file. So what we're going to do here is set up a watch on that. So every two seconds, this is just refreshing what it stores in the runtime, which is handy if we just want to watch does do things get changed? So down here you can see a line to grid grid size has been set to 80. So if I go in here and now set it to, I don't know, let's make it 11, just a nice clear different value. We hit close, go back in here, and you can see the value has indeed changed to 11. So it is successfully storing, oh yeah, successfully storing updated values. And if we reload, uh, and then bring up the linter, it still says 11. If I set that back to, well, if I delete the value there and I hit close, so it's now using whatever it's using, but it's not written that update back to the file. So that's the bug. We need to work out what is going on for it to do that. So in nrlint, uh, we go into the source tree and we want, uh, I think, nrlint core. Yeah, 
it's in here somewhere. So, um, it's in here somewhere. I just can't think where. So, user settings dot show and our lint. So it's in the user settings for our lint. Here's the lint settings panel where it gets registered to get added to user settings. And here's the close function that gets called when you close the settings panel. So this is the code that does the work to pull out the values from the form and save them. Um, and essentially, it, yeah, that's exactly what this code is doing. It, it goes and pull, iterates through all the rules, pulls out their values, builds up a new settings table, and then calls red.settings.set nrlint settings. So, and it's it's this call to red.settings.set that should trigger the um, write, rewriting of whatever we pass that into the file. So let's do a console.log of settings just so we can see exactly what are we passing in. Or yeah, what, what are we trying to save? Now, because I've edited that file, it's rerunning the build because it has to rerun the build, um, I think. No, nope, it's not rerunning the build. Have I got my, yeah, I've got my paths wrong. I need to watch the source directory as well. So yeah, that's now rebuilding because the linter, yeah, we've, we've got this build step to minify all the code to try and keep it all small. Uh, you think it's an if on line 427? Quite possibly. Yeah, I think there's an issue here with this clearing values. Um, but, you know, I'm building up to it one step at a time. So, yeah, if we clear out grid size and hit close, and here's the object. Let's make this nice and big so it shows up for you guys. Maybe a bit big. Um, it's rules, align to grid, and you can see align to grid, it has no properties. So it hasn't actually, um, it's not setting it explicitly to an empty string, it's setting it to nothing. Which, you're quite right, line 427 is this logic that if it's um, we actually only we only store its value if it's not blank because if it's blank we want to go back to the default. Um, now the problem we have is the way saving settings work is it actually merges objects. So it's a subtle bug that we don't actually have. Well, so yeah, it's a subtle bug in the settings API. It's great if you want to change the value to another non-null value, but if you want to delete a value from settings, the API doesn't currently do a good job of that. Um, so that's what we're hitting. So the question is what actually makes sense here? Um, oh no, this is interesting. Key count equals zero, then it should be setting. Sorry, I'm just going quiet whilst I just. Right, so there's some logic here that if there are no parameters with value values, then we just set the setting to the true rather than it being an empty object. But what's interesting here is in all of these, you can see they're all being set to an empty object rather than to true. Um, so there's something odd going on here. So I'm just going to a bit more debug. So say, I don't know if, yeah. Have I explained this? Oops, have I explained what's going on here? For each rule, we look at its settings, and for all of the options, if it's non-null, then we record it and we we increment key count. Um, yep. 
Yeah. Right, just need to wait for... Oh. There we go. So we go into settings. Uh, we clear that one and we hit close. So you can see all of these. It's got the rule and it's got zero. Yeah, line to grid zero, function yes, lint zero. Awesome. So they are, key count is zero. So rather than having an empty object, it should be setting rule settings, rule name to the value of true. But when I print it out down here, it's not being set to true. They're all being left as empty objects. What's going on? <clears throat> What is going on? Um, something weird. <laughs> Thanks, Lil Rex, 2015. Cozy is, is, I'll take that. We're just here having some fun writing some code. Um, well, I'm having fun writing some code. You guys are having some fun, allegedly, watching me flail around trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, oh, that's good. The Sushi Dragon using Nova to run his whole production. Oh, I'd have to check that out. Sounds good. So if we set that to blank, hit close. See, look, reset to true, reset to true. Okay, well, if you reset to true, true, why are you lying to me? Because you're not true, you're an empty object. Okay, this is going to be one of those, there's got to be some blindingly obvious thing that I'm not seeing here. What is going on? I mean, this is going to be painfully obvious when, just as soon as I spot it. Um, so, setting rule.name to empty object. And I know this sort of thing, I should use the step debugger, but hey. Um, yeah. But again, I also don't want to get too distracted because this isn't this isn't the root cause of the bug we're trying to be solving. But it's unexplainable behaviour that. Um, oh, I will say for those who watched my stream. Um, for the last few months, I've been plagued by Nodemon crashing quite regularly and having to restart it. The latest OSX update seems to have fixed it, which is awesome. And I cannot tell you how much better it is not having to manually restart lots of things all the time. Um, well, manually, not having to manually restart as many things all the time. So, close, close. Yeah, so look at all this, right? So it says, setting line empty grid to empty object, fine. Resetting line empty grid to true, okay. But then when we get down here, rules, it's not, it, it's been put back to being an object. What on earth is going on? Oops. Yeah, anyway, but we'll work on this in a minute because at the moment we are setting it to an empty string. Um,
Yeah. Just need to think about how we... We, we need a bit of logic in there which recognises we're clearing an existing value, so don't ignore it. Set it back, explicitly set it to an empty string or something to tell it to do the right thing. Oh, now this is weird. So now that I'm printing out rule settings and then followed by settings, well here, rule settings, oh, what's going on? So rule settings here, you can see it's printed out with true, 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 blah, blah. But when I expand it and it evaluates it at that point of time, they've all been set back to the empty object. Ah, is this... Is this... Get lint settings. Get lint... Yeah, oh, okay. I'm sort of seeing... I want to set it to true and have it stored as true. But the way it all works is... Um, before we take those settings and give them to nodes, anyone that's set to true, which means enable this rule with the default settings, we switch it to an empty object. <laughs> so, yeah. Essentially, by the time these console.logs are evaluated in the console, the trues have already been turned back. Um, okay. Let's just think, but we kind of want to, we kind of want to take a snapshot. So um, I'm going to do the hacky clone. Uh, yeah, do the hacky deep clone, because we know it's valid, Jason. Hi, Arisha. Uh, is, is this the latest node red? Uh, well, we are running the latest node red. This is actually working on the NR lint lint tool that we released last week to go with node red 2.0. So um, yeah, doing some development work on, oh, errors. That doesn't help. Not enough brackets. Well, of course there's the version that we've released to you lot and then there's the version I have here locally. <laughs> Except in this instance, because we've only just released 2.0, not had time to write, start writing all the cool stuff for 2.1 in October. <laughs> um, right, let's, so we reset that, hit close. That's all good. Let's just go check our file. Has the file updated? Yep, the file has updated, but it's still okay. This is doing my head in. Right, we're gonna say um, so we're gonna clone it, print it. Let's see what we're getting, and then set with that. So the fact we set via the clone settings means any more. Subsequent modification of the settings array will get ignored. Um, clean exit. Yeah, that's loaded. Let's see what's what. Rules, rules. Oh, and it's it's their empty objects again, but they shouldn't be. What? Because oh, it's this trigger lint which is causing things to get reset. So why in the... What on earth is going on? See, what I thought was going to be a nice and simple bug fix, I'm well into the... Uh, down the rabbit hole of what on earth is going on. Right, I'm going to stick a console.log because th this is where it's swapping the true back to the empty object. 
And that's fine for it to be doing that here. But I just want to see for myself when is that happening in relation to what we're trying to do, which is deal with the clone settings. Let's just let that build. So let's go linter settings, clear that. So you can see it gets linter settings. That, that's all happening in the background. That's fine. Let's clear it. We hit close, save settings, save settings done. And then we print out our cloned copy of it. And the rules are fact of being empty objects. How, 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 how is this happening? <sighs> Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, no, wait, thinking. Yes, okay, I'm there. So the problem is, so we generate the settings object and we set it and it all looks good. And then we call red.settings.set with the value, which stores it locally in the editor, just in memory, and also writes it back to the runtime. And then we trigger a lint, or well, not and then. In parallel to any request to send it, we trigger a lint. Um, and the trigger lint will uh, call get lint settings, which gets the object out of settings, plus the user settings. Yeah, uh, sorry, get, yeah, user settings. And the problem here is we are um, modifying what's in settings, converting these trues to empty objects. And we shouldn't be doing that. But by modifying it here, we're modifying in memory, which we shouldn't be doing. We should be, this is where we need to take the clone snapshot. Um, Yeah. And that's good because that, that's then immutable. So a lint rule can't modify the rules for and muck around with the rules. Right. So if this has worked, once this build is finished, done, we restart Node Red, we reload the editor, go to the lint tool, go in here, set that to back to the default, hit close. And haha. Uh -huh. So now you can see a lot of these settings have now gone back to true. Some haven't. The reason some haven't is those are old rules that don't exist anymore. And this is what the point I was saying about our settings API is additive in that it merges one object with another. Um, then um, uh, yeah. The fact that the new object doesn't have a have a property called, I don't know, flow size, means this setting just gets orphaned off in the settings file. We should sort that out, but that's out of scope for what I'm trying to address right now. What we're trying to address right now is, um, well, if anything, we have fixed the bug because if I now reload and go into the linter, it's now remembered that grid size is back to 20. And the reason that's worked is um, 
well, it's it's a bit of a cheat that it's worked. Um, it's worked because we we cleared the value, and because it's the only setting. This logic we have that says, um, sorry, let me just revert that because we didn't need to do that. Um, this logic that says only store it. Sorry, uh, if we haven't got any values to write, then just set it back to the value true. Well, that's going to overwrite whatever was there. Where it's not going to work, I don't think, and let we can test this theory, is if I bring up the source code for a rule and, um, yeah, let's use a line to grid as an example. And I'm going to add a second option, uh, test option. Okay. And this is a nice thing, the way the NRLint works. I just add this extra entry in its metadata. And when it's all rebuilt and restarted, now when I pull up settings, you can now see we've now got the two entries. Although I have to say, we could do with a bit of bit of vertical spacing on that, but I'll fix that in a sec. So now let's say we set that to 10. Oh, let's not confuse that. Let's yeah, set it to 90. Hit close. Go look at our settings file. So you now see a line to grid has test option set to 90. If I come in and delete that and set grid size instead to say 100, it set grid size to 100. But because test option was blank, it hasn't overwritten it. So it's left the option behind. So whilst none of our rules today have more than one option, so they won't hit this bug, this, this bug is lurking, um, waiting for a rule in the future that has more than one setting to hit it. So we have got a bit more work to do to fix. Um, what we're going to say, so here's our where we're looping through the, right, just whilst, whilst we're here, um, let's just go find, this is the CSS for the setting row, and we're just going to say margin bottom, I don't know, four, just, just give them a bit more space. That's all we want. Now, where were we? We were about here. So here we, this is where we loop through the rules and we loop through the options, the option metadata, which is this object in the metadata of the rule. And for each of those rules, we get its value. If it's not equal to the empty string, then we'll store it. But, um, what what we actually need to know is has the value changed rather than is it not blank um yeah that's what we want we want to say so to do that we need to get the existing settings uh can't quite remember. We had it up here. With a default looking like that. So down here, we're going to say, so V is the new value. Um, so this is setting dot rules, uh, rule dot name, except we do need to, 
are. There's oh, so many sort of if then else's to deal with here. Right. Existing rule. Ah, let's do this. So. Existing rule config. Um, so it's we want to store the value if it's not blank or there's there is an existing rule config and existing rule config um, opt yeah and v is not equal I think that's right so Rebuilt, restart, reload. Okay, so here we've got 190. We're going to delete 90. And oh, okay stuff happened then. So we've successfully set test option to the empty string, which is good. But look, these two have changed as well. And they shouldn't have changed. They shouldn't have changed. If I open and close. Yeah, see, that's fixed it. That set them back to true. So max flow size is what I'm looking at. That's gone back to true. If I open and close, it's setting it back. Um, oh, right, right, right. <laughs> so existing rule config could be the value true. So if existing rule config is true, then we'll set it to the empty object because we want to be able to pick out individuals. Uh, sorry, my opt is not rule dot name. It at this point it's um, sorry at this point it's opt. So yeah, I appreciate this might be a bit confusing. Here we've got at this loop, this is looping over the rules. So you get one one for each rule, and then this is looping over the options for that rule. So up here, rule dot name, we pull out the settings for rule dot name. Um, yeah, and then down here we're we're looking at the individual options for that existing rule. But no, good to ask because yeah, I'm glad you guys are extra pairs of eyes watching me. Hopefully, get things right. Um, so that if we, what state are we in? Right, if I hit close now, it should. Yeah. Reset everything back to true, which is good. And if I open and close it again, they should stay true. No, they're going back to empty strings. Okay. Why is that? Oh, okay. Because I shouldn't be... If I set it to the empty object, so down here, this would be true, and then this would also pass because it's an empty object. So V will always be different to whatever is in there. And that's not what we want. We want to set that to null, so actually it fails on this part of the test, not the second part of the test. Right, so we edit, close. Oh. 
Uh, yeah, so max flow size, it's gone back to true, which is what it should be. Open close. That has refreshed. Okay, and that's not changed, so that's fixed. And down here you can see test option is set to the empty string. Okay. Um, and if we set this to 90 and say that to the empty string, there, 90. So that's now storing correctly. There is there is a question of whether, is there a way we can get it to actually delete grid size? Um, and I think we can. Yeah, you're right, sorry. Well, having an option not set or set to an empty string is not the same. Well, yes and no. Um, I know technically an empty string, well, it is a limitation. You cannot have an option that whose valid value is an empty string in the sense that for us, an empty string will mean the same as it not being set. It, because these, are, these aren't meant to be used as sort of Boolean toggles. These are intended to be um, uh, true values, you know. So if you wanted empty, you could do a zero, would be more meaningful than it being an empty string. So I think if I set it to null in the case it's an empty string, i.e. we want to delete it, I think I've got the code in place to handle that. Let's see. So uh, grid size is blank, test option is 90, hit close. Uh, and that's not done anything. Okay, let's set that to blank and grid size to 100. Yes, so grid size is 100 and the other values disappeared. So now let's make grid size disappear by setting that to blank and then test option. Awesome. So that's now clearing out um, blank strings. So it kind of that then implies their default value for as far as the rule is concerned. Oh, now that's interesting. <laughs> So, I set them both to blank. Oh, I can live with this. Right, so what's happened here is, I set them both to blank expecting this to end up being set to true. Oh yeah, no, we can, we only want to increment key count if we've actually set something. If we're setting it to null, we want to delete it. But if we're setting everything to null, then that is also achieved by setting the whole thing to true. <laughs> I think, yeah, that holds up. Um, come on, there we are. So let's have a look. Grid size 101. Yep, grid size 101. And then if we delete grid size, align to grid sets to true, not the empty object. Much cleaner, much cleaner. I like that. So, um, yeah, this, this fixes the bug. That fixes the bug and we can all rejoice. Um, what we're quickly going to do is uh, what's going on? That's okay. Well, that's the other thing to quickly check. Um, yeah. Okay. I set some padding. Sorry, I set margin on the rule, but 
they're still squashed together. Let's fix let's fix that properly as well. Um, now I thought I'd done it by setting margin bottom to four pixels on NR lint setting row. Which ah, which was entirely the wrong thing to set it on because it's setting row is all the way yeah, setting row here. It actually doesn't hurt to have four pixels on that. Um, what I actually wanted to set some padding on is these right, rule opt. So margin, bottom. Yeah, stick four, four pixels on NR lint rule opt. Just looks a bit better. So let's find NR lint rule opt. So it does mark. Interesting. So it has margin top of eight working, or does it? Red UI and our lint rule opt. Margin top eight. So why isn't that? Why isn't that applying? Have I got something wrong on the selector? Oh, that's only being a... what? Um, yeah, let's try that. Um, oh, except I killed my build script, so let's just run the build. Build, restarted, reloaded. Ah, it's still not applying. What's going on? What is going on? Why is rule locked? Is it getting overridden? Is it? Oh, anyway, I'm just going to stick it in here. Too, too much like the end of the day to sweat all those details. Well, build, webpack, build. Built, restart, reload. Pull up the settings. There we are, finally. Just a little bit of breathing space. Good, good. Um, awesome. What I must do is go into a line to grid and undo all those changes because we don't want my dummy test option to end up in the release. Um, yeah, okay, so we've fixed the CSS and that. Let's just go and uh, commit it. So, yeah, fix up some padding or margin. Make sure we clone the settings before we modify them so we don't modify them in when we don't mean to modify them. And then down here, if we clear an existing setting, set it to null before we pass it back to the runtime, which will get it deleted. And, um, yeah. Yeah. 
and that's what we want. So we stage it, let's commit it, um, ensure and rule settings that are cleared get removed. No better way than using JSON piles and JSON stringify. Um, well, we need to do a deep clone of a JavaScript object. So object.assign won't work because that doesn't do deep. Um, yeah, and I've, to be honest, there may well be these days somewhere in ES6 a neater way of doing it, but given it's going to be a relatively small piece of valid JSON, and we know it's going to be JSON because we serialize it as JSON, then it's it's quick and easy to do it that way. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to sweat it too much. Um, I know I don't have to worry about circular references. I know I don't have to worry about non-JSON types. So uh, yeah. I'm happy with that. So ensure rule settings that are cleared get removed from runtime settings. And this is going to fix what's your issue number? Let me show what's your issue number? Number 11. You know what? I I fixed issue 3090 on Node-RED earlier today. And we're on number 11 here, so we've got some way to go. Uh, what's happened to my screen? Where are we? So that's fixed. Um, now, there was one new feature for the NRLint tool. I'm just conscious of the time. I, I'm having a quick think. Do I even want to try and get into this right now? Um, Let's do a speed run. Here we go. Right. Um, a bit of feedback we got was the lint tool is linting disabled tabs, which isn't very kind of it. So what we want to do is add an option to not lint disabled tabs. Uh, wait, what? That's all good. That's all good. Yeah, we're going to speed run. May not get it all the way through. So we're going to add an option in settings here, a uh, simple checkbox to not lint disabled tabs. Now, to make things a bit clearer, I'm going to turn off a whole bunch of these rules just because. <laughs> got too many going on um, and we will okay we're going to do just stick with no overlapping nodes okay so we've only got one instance of no overlapping nodes I'm going to go into the tab and disable it and ooh, yeah <laughs> doesn't look ideal but if we hit deploy on that um, essentially we would like to have an option so we don't lint disabled tabs or disabled nodes for that matter. Um, uh, that makes things a bit more complicated. There's always a bit of complication to these things. Um, let's, let's just see how we get on. I want to be super quick on this. Um, and there's going to be a bunch of copy and pasting. So this is the settings panel code where we were moments ago. We are going to um, uh, we want to add uh, 
yeah, I'm not really, I'm just trying to find, make sure I copy the right amount of code here. There we are. Uh, in fact, yeah, I'm not going to go so far as to commit this change because um, just going to do enough just to show the principle of what needs to do. It's going I see. I see what's going on. I see what's happening here. Uh, lint disabled flows. And this is going to be for the setting lint disabled flows. Um, yeah, so Michel, how does NRLint detect loops? There is there is a bug with the current loop detection that hits some false positives and there is a pull request that fixes it. Um, and a loop is what you would think it is. So if a message can leave a node, take some path and end up back in that node, then that is a loop. But the current algorithm hits some false positives that we've fixed. Um, yep, yep, yep. Uh, now, how are we setting? Okay, well that's should be enough for the moment. Almost. Um, Is now that should be enough to oh let's just tidy that up that now gives us all of the UI stuff for this new option so let's just see that Lint disabled flows. Cool. Now, if I've still got my, oh, let's run my watch again. So now you can see lint disabled flows is set to false. Um, now the default behavior is going to be, um, what should, well, I think by default, it shouldn't lint disabled flows. I think that's reasonable. So if if it's not set, then let's see. Yeah. So where 
I'm setting its initial value. What we actually want to do is, um, if not, uh, no, if not current settings dot has own property lint disabled flows, then we're going to say lint current settings dot lint disabled flows is true. Yeah, so if the current settings doesn't have this property, then we're going to initialize it to true, and then we'll set up the UI for it. Cool. Oh, errors. Errors. Connection refused. That's because I'm... No. What? Unexpected errors. So you say, what? Node is running. Ah, no. I think I tried to. Yeah, I think it was restarting in the background and I didn't pay attention. Close. Then disable flows set to false. Awesome. Then turn it on. And that's flips to true. Cool. So we've got the basic UI. That was the easy part. Now let's um, think about how do we make that even work. Um, so now we have to go into the heart of the linter itself. Linter.js. Um, so it gets past its configuration. Um, and what we're going to say here is oh, lint disabled flows is true by default. If config dot has own property. Then config Oh, better not make that const if so we're gonna change it. Okay, so in the linter we set that to true, but if the config has a value, then we'll use that. Uh the name of the CLI tool to parse JSON JQ JSON query is what it is. Um, and very useful it is too. Okay, so what this what the linter does is it. Sorry, I'm just. Scanning through dispatch visitors. Okay, here's where we get into the interesting part. Um, flow set. So flow set is the parsed flows, and we call the walk function, which will call back this code for every object in the flow. Um, and then, depending on the type of object, we invoke any of the lint rules that are listening on that type of thing. Now, um, what we want to do is we want to keep track of flows that are disabled. Yeah. So if we're given a object of type flow, we are going to say um, no, we're not, sorry. 
what we're going to do is come down here and say if obj.z so the z property ident tells us what flow an object is on and if it's one we have we know about which it should be because of the order that the walk function visits things it will always visit the flow before it visits any nodes in that flow but better safe than sorry um, so if object said and we've got the config of its parent then and this is where I just need to double check this is the object we have for a flow object and we want and we care about the disabled property so um, Um, so we've been given an object with a Z property, which means it's in a flow or a subflow, but, and that flow is disabled. Good. Then what we want to do is we want to skip the dispatch. Um, Um, yeah, sorry, I'm just, yeah, I think we I think it's semantically right if we can just return at this point to skip doing any of the, oh, <laughs> except we've forgotten to actually only <laughs> We need if not disable flows and all of that. Hockey dog, let's see, it's building. Talk amongst yourselves. I mean, if this works, I'm not going to commit this now. I'm not going to take this any further because I, I need to check some of the logic around some of the nested things you can have, like nested groups and just to make sure it all stands up. But as it stands, okay, we've got overlapping nodes in this disabled flow. If I go into my settings and untick lint disabled flows. Yeah, okay, it's it's not worked at all. It's, it's still hitting them. Um, Let's let's see what's going on. Five more minutes, five more minutes, and then we'll see. So we should start seeing lint disabled flows as false. False. Okay. But. Okay, so lint disabled flows is false. We are successfully passing through the false value. But all that logic I wrote isn't working. Um, for some reason. As in this stuff here to skip parsing this object isn't working. Which bit of it isn't working? So, um, what I'm gonna do is, so here's a node that is overlapping that we care about and we're gonna grab its ID and say if obj.id is that, then we're just gonna to go to town with printing out some debug. We're going to print out obj.z, 
we're going to objects are dot disabled. In fact, print out the whole of that. And this is actually be interesting. I don't know if we've got any unit tests in the flow parser for the disabled flag. So we may have just found a different bug, which is awesome, but not one I'm going to sit here fixing for you all because I want to go have tea. So we reload, we wait for it. Aha, uh -huh. undefined. Oh, am I? Yeah, no, I'm. I'm silly. Yes. So flow level configs. That's not. That's not what I thought it was. Um, yeah. What we're going to do is. Um, so. We're going to build up a set of disabled flows. So in here we'll say if obj.disabled um, disabled flows dot add obj.id and then here instead of all that so so here we don't want to be linting disabled stuff. The node we're looking at has a Z property and disabled flows dot has ob dot Z. Then that'll do it. Oh. You know, I resisted doing stuff with Webpack for so long and well, I'd quite happily not use it or any other build tool. Cool, no lint errors. No lint errors at all. So we go in, say lint disabled flows, and it finds the error. Awesome. And if we click use defaults, then it finds a whole bunch. But because lint disabled flows is still false or turned off, we don't get anything on here. We do get 37 errors, but that's for me to worry about. And now it's 38. Awesome. So that's okay. That took more than a couple of minutes, but basic principle for filtering on disabled flows. I do want to um, need to do a bit more poking on that, I think. Um, yeah, I think just out of interest. Well, it's just if I turn that off, so those lint warnings go away. If I go and enable this flow and the error returns because it's no longer disabled, that's working. Um, is there any other aspect to this I need to think about? Um, ah, linting disabled nodes. So, for so example, this one, if I hit disabled, then the node's disabled, but it's still linting. Um, but it's overlapping. Even though it's disabled, it's still overlapping. So it does kind of feel like um, I don't think having the same turn off option makes sense. Now it might make sense if we go to one of the loop, where's my test cases for loops? They're here somewhere. Here they are. Um, what's that complaining about? Oh, that's, <laughs> I don't have my pull request in this copy of the code for fixing the loops. This error here is because it thinks 
this node is in a loop, even though it's not, you can see it's not. I haven't got my fix in this copy of the code, so. Um, but it would seem reasonable if I were to disable that, well, come down here, obvious loop, you can see the nice infinity of wires. If I were to disable that, then there is no longer a loop, but it, it will still warn about it. So I think, I think it makes sense rather than having a global option for lint disabled nodes, I think it's got to be up to individual rules to decide should I apply to a disabled node or not. Because rules that are related to layout, like aligning to the grid, are overlapping, it doesn't matter if the node is disabled or not. It's, it's a visual lint, so it should still apply. Um, now, yes, okay, disabling the whole tab well but that's why we make this an option for if you disable the whole tab don't worry about the errors um i think that makes sense so yeah so i think i want to go and as part of this go through our existing rules and make them do the right thing if the thing is disabled and i'm not going to do that right now on the live stream i'm going to um wrap things up at this point and say Keep an eye out for 204. Um, I will get that published uh, tonight, probably, because I'm out tomorrow. Um, and I kind of want to get it out in people's hands as soon as possible so that I have a chance to go on holiday next week without you guys raising issues that need fixing urgently. Because, um, yeah, a few of us are away on holiday. So, uh, you know, we want to make sure you guys are happy and everything's working. Um, and then we can go relax. So on that note, I am going to go relax. Uh, thanks for joining. Thanks forever. Uh, yeah, as ever for joining. I will be back. Like I said, keep an eye on the schedule. I'll try and keep the Twitch schedule up to date. No stream next week. Probably then back for one week, then away. I think it's going to be pretty much every other week through August, I think. But check the schedule. I'll I'll try to keep it up. If you log in at 8pm and, you know, if I'm not streaming by five minutes past eight, I'm probably not making it. So I'll try not to keep you guessing, but take it easy. All the best. And I shall see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Good night.